Out of the last 10 mass murders, six or seven of them drank alcohol or took antidepressants, but they don't focus on, on that because if that isn't um, how you enslave humanity. This hasn't changed in a hundred years. Yeah, it, I, I don't think it's going to change because the elite, they will constantly control the society. They control the mass media, even still to this age. I, I think they did the test of uh, people fighting for toilet paper. I mean, that is <laughs> insanity. There's no proof that COVID-19 is a lab created virus but it sure is suspicious that there's it's not found in nature there's no COVID-19 found in bats they found the building blocks in bats but I mean the lab people need to start with something and and that it of these uh coronaviruses started out as non-lethal viruses and then they've gotten more lethal in the last 20 years which is also suspicious but uh like Jello Biafra you know who Jello Biafra was? No, I, I don't. Jello Biafra was the lead singer of the Dead Kennedys. Very political guy, very political uh, lyricist. And he said, don't hate the media, become the media. Yeah, so right. it's super important right now that everyone becomes their own little broadcasting. The last 10 mass murders, three of them smoke pot and they try to, oh, there's a connection there. At the exact same time as this uh, Reefer Madness was going around, they were still selling corporate uh cannabis medicine eli Lilly here uh elixir number 26 bromo coral compound with uh hyoscyamus and cannabis indica in it uh, as an anti uh, delirium tremens which is like alcohol withdrawal you can see on the one hand if you're a white guy in a lab coat then it's fine to sell cannabis products but if you're yeah. a mexican selling the the uh, whole plant medicine the bulk herb then uh, you are a menace to society. There's a lot of evidence of that happening today, and there was a yeah. lot of ha evidence happening of that happening a hundred years ago. Even even today, I mean, when they legalize in cannabis in Canada, the police officer, all these guys got into the game first, like all the people who fight for it and mm -hmm. who went to jail, whose lives were destroyed. Like they didn't even get a chance to get into like legal side of the business. Yeah. I think it's it's always it remains the same. The big corporations, the big people with connections, always get the first. Uh, yeah, first do as stage. I say, not as I do. Yeah. And it's funny. Um, the excuses they gave to create a legal market were, we got to shut down organized crime, and we got to yeah. increase the quality of the product. And and what happens when the corporations get involved? Well, uh, the Senate left in a loophole that allows uh, people to invest in these licensed producers anonymously yeah so you still have organized crime going on there yeah, yeah and then the quality just went way down you have uh people using i guess it's the same poison used uh to kill jews in the gas chambers zyklon d <laughs> yeah they're using that as a as a uh insect control pest uh control on on this cannabis totally it cleaves into hy hydrogen cyanide this uh uh, Eagle 20 that people have used and it was only used by corporations. It was never found in any of the activist suite uh, You can't smell it anymore. So there's really no incentive to have turpinous product, right? Yeah. They're uh, Putting it in warehouses for months or longer this legal pot is the opposite of what was promised so it's Absolutely. a big big problem it, it remains the same uh, we'll talk about the treaty the 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 League of Nations opium that I sent you a link. Yeah, what well, was that, 1925? Yeah. That 20... one? Yeah, there was a series of international treaties, and then I think they slipped Indian hemp into that one. Uh, you can yeah. see uh, growing hemp in the Aconcagua Valley in Chile. Uh, industrial hemp was legal all over the world, and people were growing it all over the world, but acted quickly to make it illegal all over the world using these international treaties. The Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 in the United States, well, there was a lot of evidence of fraud in the creation of that. And they really had no, no evidence that this industrial hemp or, or marijuana, ganja or whatever you want to call it, Indian hemp, no evidence that there was a, any sort of health problem going on there. They just lied, made it illegal everywhere, and then phased out hemp growing 
and and that's why we're suffering from climate destabilization the hemp-based economy because everything that isn't glass or metal can be replaced with hemp concretes press board particle board plastics cellophane dynamite fabrics paper fuel yeah so um this is the real reason hemp is illegal it isn't a the medical monopoly the medical mo monopoly right now hemp could you know cannabis could replace about half of all over-the-counter drugs or half of all medicines if fully researched medicine economy is about a trillion maybe maybe two yeah. in the world yeah um and then half that is like 500 billion dollars the fuel economy is like triple what the medicine economy is oh, and yes. most of that could be like 95 percent of it could be replaced with hemp that's the real reason hemp was made illegal it's not the medicine monopoly it's not the police state and the scapegoating and the white supremacy although that's a big part of it too they don't want to share that with the farmers and gardeners oh, in the yeah. world so they want i to keep that in their hands so my question is there any video that that i can see on the internet which shows like a small they are, they are carbon neutral they grow their own hemp they eat it they just make clothes they just uh, sell it and and they produce uh, fuel right now in, in poland as a fuel crop uh the problem is that uh fossil fuels are so heavily subsidized and hemp is so heavily overregulated it doesn't make economic sense to grow it as a fuel. If you want a video image of uh, people growing hemp for everything, uh, Hemp for Victory is uh, a video that the US government produced. And there's lots of imagery in there that you could reapply to, to the situation we are talking about right now. Hemp seed has much more digestible form of protein and it has essential fatty acids that steak doesn't have. Yep. And, you know, it can be made delicious, uh, but uh, it's super, super healthy for people and they should be eating hemp seeds instead of steaks. So another like meat lover, they say, okay, I, I can I can be veggie, but how do I get the protein source? Like that's their another... Hemp seeds, man. Uh, well, you know, aside from nuts and, and the lentils and things like that, um, chickpeas, uh, hemp seeds have wonderful protein and uh, you should uh, Google hemp seeds, find out uh, all about the hemp is the world's best food source. Yeah. yeah I, I take hemp seeds, like um, I grind it up and mix it with my protein shake after the workout Yeah, because it absorbs slowly into the body and you get the best of it. Yeah. And it's I, made artificially expensive by using this reefer madness as an excuse to overregulate hemp, but it should be way cheaper than it already is right now. And people should be able to grow it in their backyards to supply themselves with it too. Marijuana Tax Act of 1937 sure. and the fraud that under underlied that process of, of coming up with that tax act. Yeah. They, they, they pretended it was just a tax on marijuana when in fact it was a prohibition. They said you can't grow hemp unless you have one of these tax stamps. And then they refused to hand out any of them. Yeah. And the, the testimony from the experts, they lied about it. They said the AMA was totally behind it. The American Medical Association. Yeah. The American Medical Association sent one guy, Dr. Woodward, and he was totally against the prohibition. He was like, no, this is a wonderful medicine. What are you guys doing? And they said, oh, stop trying to get in the way of what we're doing. And then they yeah. lied about it. They said, oh, he's totally, he's totally for it. Yeah. So that's how the, the, that cannabis was made illegal in the United States in 1937. And yeah. it came with a huge propaganda push. All the movies came out at that time, 35, 36, 37, Reefer Madness, yeah. Assassin yeah. of Youth, yeah. Youth all, the, all the horrible movies where you see people murdering other people with golf clubs and jumping out of windows. Yeah, that all happened then. And, yeah. and that's, you know, basically how we got the pot laws that we have now. But that's what I was looking at and thinking that, okay, it was a collective effect to change the tide and it has to be collective effect to change the tide again. It started with a few people making a movie about a bunch of lies. So, I mean, the thing that's going to turn it around is a couple of people making a movie about the truth. See, we got to be the first domino to set off a reaction.
Yeah, we got to be, but I, I won't hit it so hard that people then, okay, this is doable. Even I can do, you, you know what I mean? Like when the normal people think that, okay, even I can do it, I can yeah. be self-sustainable. I don't care. So how many, how many people can government arrest? How many people they can put in jail? That's, that's, that's how I want to take a look at it. That, okay, I can be self, self-sustainable. This is the care I can use on my car and I can produce, I can be, I can be on my own. I don't, I don't need anybody. Like that's, that's. Okay. I I just saw this video that was posted a couple of days ago. It's a couple of French guys turning their motorbike into an ethanol bike. People converting their bikes. It's the same thing with cars and with bikes. To, yeah. Uh, change yeah. change over your vehicle to uh, powered by ethanol. We we say that there's a problem, and then there's a solution, and then how do we implement it? Yeah. There are cellulosic ethanol manufacturing plants all over the world. There's. Uh, think a dozen or there's like 16 in the united states and there's 30 or 40 in canada <laughs> make cool videos 